Well, good morning, Southern Oregon. Alice Lima here and Pete Bell Castro. We're both brokers at John L. Scott Real Estate here in Southern Oregon. Welcome to the Real Estate Show. Well, Pete, here we are right before Christmas. Uh, it's been uh, another interesting week in Southern Oregon real estate. How are things going in your world? Well, you know, the, we're in that winter. You know, winter starts in another in a few days, actually. And so we're in the winter selling season, you know, right now, fewer, there's fewer showings going on, but still when, it, when, when houses, the inventory is so low that when things come on, especially in the price ranges that are very popular, they're going very quickly. And we're still seeing multiple offers, Alice, and a lot of them, a lot, a lot of situations that I'm finding. It just depends what price you're looking for, which community you're looking in. Uh, so there's still a lot, the demand certainly has not gone down. The supply certainly has not gone up. And so we're still in that same situation we've been in for some time. It's, we know, which is a steady market that is going to go right through winter, I think, uh, and just explode maybe in the spring. Well, and it's it's becoming such a strong winter. And, and you know, we had talked about this, Pete, where we wondered what it was going to be like uh, as the pandemic winds down, as the vaccine becomes uh, available, and hopefully people, businesses will start to open up again. So um, we've had a very strong housing situation here in Southern Oregon, some because of the relocators coming here and just some people just taking advantage of the low interest rates. You know, people are closing yeah. below 3% in some cases. You know, right now, that, that's the biggest thing. Look, as long as interest rates remain at below that 3% level, down to 2.5, even below that, there's going to be a big demand on the market. The issue is always right now about inventory, Alice, as they're still 63% down from a year ago in all three counties. So it's, it's affecting every community. There's just not a lot of choice. So, you know, supply, I'm sorry, there's a great many choices above 500,000. I mean, you can, it's over half that market of, the, of those of the listings are above 500,000. But below that, they're going, still going very, very fast. They're coming on, put them in good condition, get an inspection. Speaking of that, we've got Travis Hand from Rogue Inspections with us today, Alice, who we've known for some time, who is kind of, who is just leading kind of the way with home inspections and what to expect from them and the kinds of inspections that are out there. So we're going to look forward to hear what he's got to say about home inspections in this kind of market, especially in the winter. Yeah, we're so excited to be talking to Travis Hand of Rogue Inspections today. So we have a break coming up. Um, we are brought to you by John L. Scott here in Southern Oregon, the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, and Guy Giles of Mutual of Omaha Mortgage. So we thank them greatly. We have a break right now. So do not touch that dial. Come right back. Pete and Alice have another hour of really good info for you for real estate here in Southern Oregon. Okay. I got everybody. Right. Very, very <laughs> I have been practicing, but I get nervous and then I forget. That was, that was a, a good one too. Uh, good. All right. Well, I'll keep practicing. Okay. okay so Melissa okay. says, before I let Pete go, um, uh, okay. Okay. So instead of doing, yeah, instead of doing, let me turn the video off. Um, Instead of doing the, well, welcome back to the real estate show, folks. I'm Alice Lima here with Pete Bell Castro. We're both brokers at John L. Scott Southern Oregon, and we're here with another exciting episode of the real estate show. We get to talk to Mr. Travis Hand, who is the owner of Rogue Inspections. Welcome, Travis. How are you guys? So we're so excited to have you on this time of year. Uh, not only is it intense when you have homes and water and such, but I understand that your company is undergoing some pretty big changes as well. Yeah, yeah, we've got uh, quite a few new things going on. So um, just recently, we've got uh, six licensed inspectors now. Um, still growing that number. We're still actually about 98% um, capacity with just those six. So uh, we are still looking to bring on some other inspectors, especially in our new areas. Um, we do have a virtual office in Eugene now. So we're starting to actually develop that uh, area as well. So, so working on some rapid growth in a couple areas. 
So pretty exciting stuff. We are doing some new services as well. Um, we've brought on some radon equipment. So uh, especially in the Eugene area where we're starting with some radon. So we do have that capability down here if it ever is requested, even though it's very rare. Um, and that's probably the biggest changes going on at the moment. Hey, so Travis, what, oh, let's say, Travis, what have you done? Um, how has the pandemic affected what you're doing and how you're doing your work? Because you go into individual houses as inspectors and, and you have to crawl around. So tell me, tell us how your business has changed or modified or what you've done differently uh, since the pandemic has hit us now, which we're, look, we're going to be a year in March. Yep, exactly. Um, so that has done quite a bit of changes for us um, as far as uh, how we're going through our inspection process, how we're interacting with our clients and the real estate agents. Um, a lot of that now has gone toward a uh, phone kind of wrap up or walk through at the end or FaceTime. Um, let me tell you, that was a little tricky at the beginning to get that going. You try to tell six grown men that they have to do FaceTime calls with their clients every time. Uh, that was a work through, but we got it done. <laughs> so that, we do offer that service. Um, and uh, that's going well. Still, a majority of the time we're having our clients show up um, just because they want to. Um, it's very important to them. So um, at that point, then we're following the social, social distancing rules, uh, making sure that we're providing that safe space. Um, if we are going into a home that's occupied, uh, we do wear masks. We can wear gloves if they request it. We are washing our hands, uh, sanitizing our equipment, doing that stuff, trying to limit any exposure, especially from property to property. And when people are in, in place, we do make sure we take the necessary precautions to protect them. Um, so that's kind of a couple of the changes that we've done. Well, it's it's a slow day. Oh, sorry. Sorry, folks. We're uh, working remotely too. Go ahead, Pete. Sorry. It's a slow day. What you do, I, I was just curious because, you know, when Alice or I will call, you know, for a home inspection, you know, and, and sometimes there, there's delays, there's this or that. Ha, has it slowed down or can we still call you and get there, you know, within, you know, three or four days? Or do, What has that done? So it's, um, it's slowing down just a little bit right now. We are, uh, we are booked into next week still. Um, this week we were booked about six, seven days out, um, which is farther than I'd like to be just for uh, convenience wise for our buyers and our agents. Um, so it hasn't really slowed down. And um, I would say we've still done 100 to 150 inspections each month. Um, we've got, oh, we'll end this year with about 15, 1600 inspections for the year. Um, so wow. in a year where we've got COVID um, a quarter of the way through, uh, we still managed to do fairly well. Um, a lot of that is we've kind of tried to help out in the community, um, offer the services to people in need, um, and try to help keep things moving as much as we can from our end. And um, that's, that's been beneficial. So. Cool. So was that a surprise, uh, Travis, uh, to have still so much demand for home inspections during the pandemic? It was a big surprise. Um, when this whole thing happened, I was just, I was nervous. I was, I had no idea what to expect. There was shutdowns here and there. And I would say for the first two weeks after that initial shutdown, uh, things were rough. Things were slowed down. We only had a couple things going on. Um, and it wasn't looking good. But after that second week, um, it just it jumped right back up to where it was. Um, I think October was our highest. I think we did 190 inspections in October, um, which just our guys, which we were all pushed to the limit with that, but trying to keep up with demand. Um, so that was just crazy and, and things are still moving. Uh, what I see kind of slowing it down now is just the lack of inventory on the market where there's not um, as many home sales going on just because there's not much selling. So from my perspective, I'm not an agent though. So <laughs> well, well, there's, there's, go ahead, Alice. No, 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 you go ahead. <laughs> I would say there's a lot of selling going on out there. The problem is that what's coming up, it just goes off the market so fast that it doesn't allow the inventory, the, the total inventory to build up. So we're still, you know, 63% down, but boy, you're exactly right. Because Alice and I, back in March, we didn't know what we were going to do, right? We were going to think it's going to go like, like this. And instead it pretty much was, 
was shocking how, how busy it's been. So it's natural that the inspections, inspection people would have the same kind of, of a year as real estate in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's, that's remarkable. Yeah, and I would expect most other inspectors are having a similar type of experience where they're, where they're actually staying busy uh, through all of this, which is great. So when you're um, working with people um, in their sale process, what are some of the common uh, problems that people are discovering when they're purchasing a home and they're doing their home inspection? Um, a lot of the things we're kind of noticing now, um, we're getting into the season where um, obviously you have a lot of foliage loss from that, uh, where gutters are overflowing, gutters are full plugged, uh, you've got your underground drains plugged to where you're starting to notice a lot of water problems. Um, so that's something we're always looking for, uh, keeping roofs clean as far as debris, making sure there's no water stoppage or water backing up under any of that to cause those roof leaks. Um, so those are some of the biggest things that can help prevent some major issues down the road. Um, this is the time of year as well where it starts to get cold and you start to see a lot of rodent activity moving to inside of the house um, where they're looking for that warm area. So any of those penetrations or holes or cracks that they can get into, they're going to find their way through that. So um, definitely a good time of year now to take a look at that and try to keep all of that uh, pest maintenance on top of um, as good as you can just to prevent any of that rodent activity inside of your home. So how would somebody know if they had rodent activity? So there's some pretty good uh, indications. Uh, obviously, you hear scratching, any of that type of stuff. Um, I'm assuming most people aren't just going to see uh, mice or rats running across their living room at that that point that's just going to be kind of creeping everybody out but uh so you want to listen if you hear any weird sounds uh, especially from the crawl space or attic you may have a good indication that there is something up there um, they also do leave little grease marks uh, from their sebum um, getting into those holes so if you start to notice maybe um, it's kind of some brownish grease streaks um, coming into your foundation or on your siding somewhere uh, that's a good indication that you've got rodents coming in there um, and the, another good just practice would be just walking around your house, looking around that foundation, making sure all of your screens are sealed. Um, that's the easiest entry point for them, uh, just because it's an open gap in your foundation and there's insulation, hot water lines, everything else that's going to make them nice and cozy down in your crawl space. So um, just doing a general walk around of your property, uh, looking for those signs will definitely help. And then obviously call a pest control professional or someone uh, to get that taken care of if you do notice those things. And why, why is it important to keep rodents out of your crawl space and attic? I don't know that people understand the damage they can do. Yeah, so uh, we've had several situations where uh, they cause just an insane amount of damage. Um, they will actually chew through PEX, uh, first of all. So we've had uh, a mold test before where rodents had chewed through a hot water line um, in a crawl space, flooded the crawl space, causes insane humidity inside the home just because hot water is coming through there all the time. Um, so you've got mold remediation, all that stuff that's going to come just from that rodent chewing through that line. So it can be very expensive. Um, they will rip down all of your insulation, make beds for themselves there. They will chew through ductwork. We see that constantly. Um, so they'll get into your ductwork. At that point, they're dropping their feces and their urine inside of your ductwork that's coming into the house. And that's the air you're breathing. So that's a safety concern. Um, Want to make sure we aren't having our occupants breathing that type of stuff inside the house. So um, there's, there's a lot of damage they can do. Uh, a lot of that ductwork when it's replaced is uh, a couple thousand dollars uh, and you want to make sure it's cleaned out. Um, it's a fairly extensive process. So keeping rodents out of your house is really a significant thing you can do as a homeowner uh, to save yourself some serious money down the road. Does a regular, does a regular home inspection cover that? So I'm going to find out from you whether or not I have rodents up, up in my attic down below. Is, a reg is that covered, Travis? That is, yes. So we do a, uh, a pest and dry rot um, evaluation with all of our inspections. It's included in the report. So um, number one, you'll have a good indication if there is any pest activity, um, droppings, urine, recent activity, entry points. We mark all of that stuff in your report for you. 
um, so you can get that taken care of. And then uh, we also do look for termites and all of that stuff. So if that's found, that's noted in your report as well. Um, all of those things are, are what we consider. Do you see that much? Termite activity? No, I was, I was asking, Alice, do you see, when you see reports of your clients, how often do you see that type of thing, that type of issue out there? Is, is it common, do you, would you say? Not, not in Southern Oregon. There are some wood boring pests that maybe Travis can speak to that will sometimes alarm our um, relocating folks, especially if they're from the Bay Area where there were a lot of orchards before Silicon Valley was built. So, um, but maybe Travis can address that. I don't, I don't recall ever having in 11 years over 400 and something properties. I don't think I've ever seen active termites. How I'm about not term termites? Talking about just generally pests, you know, feces, those kinds of things that we're talking about. Do you see that often? Oh, yes, 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 actually we do. Sorry, we're yeah. still working remotely, folks. <laughs> we're on Zoom. So yeah, actually the, the rats and the mice in particular, yeah, that's almost every single house. And it doesn't have so much to do with how clean people are. It has to do with like Travis was saying that the weather and the access, you know, if they can get in. Yeah. Yeah. So I see it too. I was going to say, it's probably one of the top two or three items that seem to come up on a lot of inspections, not necessarily in homes, but certainly in older homes. And especially if you've been there a long time, see whether or not you have openings because those varmints are really, really smart about getting in and checking that. Hey, I know we have a, we have a break coming up, Alice. And when we come back, can we talk about pre-home inspections with Travis? My That's favorite. Something you advocate, <laughs> you advocate that all the time. And I want to hear what, what Travis has to say about how best we can do, how, what's the best way for clients to go here on an inspection when you're going to sell your house? Yeah, it's a it's an interesting topic. It's still a little bit controversial in Southern Oregon, but in other cities uh, across the nation, it's standard practice. And um, yeah, so folks, uh, don't go away. We have a break coming up and uh, Alice and Pete will be right back. We're with Travis Hand of Rogue Inspection, one of our local inspection companies. Do not touch that dial. Well, welcome back, real estate fans, to The Real Estate Show. I'm Alice Lima here with Pete Belcastro. We're both brokers at John L. Scott here in Southern Oregon. And we have a most interesting, uh, Travis Hand of Rogue Inspections is here with us today. And we have a most interesting conversation going. And uh, right before the break, we were talking about rodents and pests and some of the damage that they can do under a house and in the attic. And it's very common for us when we're buying and selling real estate to find those kinds of things. So one of the ideas that I had a few years ago was to start having pre-listing inspections. And uh, Travis, I'm just curious, how often is that happening in your business? Do you have people asking for that before they go online? Uh, rarely still, uh, quite honestly, as much as uh, we recommend it as um as you're planning to sell your house um, and as much as you do them and kind of promote it, um, it's still pretty rare in this area. Um, you're definitely the one leading the way in that. Um, and we have a few people um, who will randomly ask for one, um, but it's such a huge, huge thing in my opinion um, to keep a home sale moving. I know in this market um, with people getting the prices for their houses and everything else, it, it may not be something at the top of their mind, but um, having that done before the sale, it's going to give you a good idea as to what's wrong with your house, what could possibly come up in a buyer's inspection. And even though we do a pre-listing inspection, it doesn't prevent the buyer from having a buyer's inspection, but it gives you a good idea, um, gives you the ability to see what needs to be done, um, if there's any major things that may come back um, on you when you're negotiating that sale. And that gives you the opportunity to get several contractors there bidding it, getting the work done and getting a price that you want rather than being forced to do it or give a credit uh, for a ridiculously amount more than what it's going to be um, in that home sale. So it's going to save you money. You're well going to pay for that three to four or $500 that inspection is going to cost you um, with how much money you're going to save doing those repairs on the front side rather than 
in that escrow window um, when you're crunched for time, you're using the first contractor you can find and or you're giving up an insane credit. So um, it will pay for yep. itself and it gives you a ton of knowledge moving into that sale. Well, a lot of people, you know, look at this thing and Alice was, when Alice first brought this up several years, quite a few years ago now, I thought she was crazy at first, Travis, because, you know, people aren't going to really do that. But I'll tell you, as we've gone through that and the experiences that I've had when we've done it and the sellers have done the pre-home inspection, the sale has gone really so much smoother because the seller is more in control of the sale now because they know what's there. The worst thing that I've seen, it, it was, I sold a million, $1.1 million property and, 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 and the sellers make these buyers go through an inspection on their own instead of handing them the inspection of the house. And then they get mad when the buyers come back and say, we will we hear some things wrong. We'd like to have these fixed. And I'm telling you, it is, I don't know, Alice, if you think so, but the home inspection process here, especially the repair addendums, turn out to be the biggest deal killers of all in all of real estate. Is that true? Is it, what do you guys think of that? I, I totally agree 100%. And um, hats off to any seller that is willing to do that ahead of time and put it online. It's also great disclosure, um, but it is out of the norm. In Southern Oregon, the burden is usually on the buyer to have that done. And quite frankly, if you think about this, we're asking buyers to pay three, four, five hundred dollars to write an offer. And that's counterintuitive and it slows the sales process down. So um, yeah, I think I think people should have their house inspected every five years, whether they're selling or not. That's how into this I am because properties are always changing. You know, they're they're degrading, you know, and you just don't know what's going on. So um, I'm kind of surprised, uh, Travis, that more people are not jumping on the bandwagon yet. But um, boy, I tell you, the sellers sure sleep better at night already knowing what's going on with their house. And then they don't lose the transaction. Even a hot market buyer can change their mind. Exactly. And one of the things I get the most feedback on is that it's, uh, it's disclosing stuff and like, all those type of things to where maybe uh, the seller wasn't aware of something and now they have to disclose it. Well, they're going to have an inspection on the back end 98% of the time, unless you get somebody whose friends and cousin is a contractor and they're going to look at the house for them. Then you have those situations, but most likely it's going to get discovered by an inspector. Um, the inspectors in our area all do a great job. They have, uh, they're all knowledgeable. They're going to find an issue. Um, so the fact that you find it on the front side is actually going to benefit you rather than having it found on the back side, especially if it's a big issue, something that may take a couple months um, to get scheduled and repaired. Um, then you can just kind of put that on hold, get it done, and then move into your sale with full confidence that your home is going to sale, sell quickly and the sale is going to close quickly. So that's definitely beneficial. So Pete, I was just wondering um, in your experience when you don't have a seller's inspection to look at, um, how often do you think the buyers change their mind about the property? Well, the buy oh, I think they change their mind a lot based upon that, that report because look, some, bu some buyers that we've seen have, have been bidding and things and you have to do two or three of these. You know, you, you're getting tired of having to do home inspections if the things don't come through. So. You know, I think it's really important now that to, 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 to have the knowledge. Look, I lived in my house for 23 years, you know, and I thought everything was great until I did, did the pre-home inspection when I sold it a few years ago. And, you know, it catches up to you. You think you might be putting it off and no one's going to see it, but that's really not the case. And so I at least was proactive because you had, you had you know, made me think that way. And ever since then, clients who have done through that, the sellers have done a better job you're right they've slept better they know what to expect the buyers love having it for them and it makes the whole process so much easier the problem is that agents are not pushing that pre-home inspection to, to to their clients uh they're thinking well it's just an added cost but come on you know you're getting above market value here right now in these things and it would make it make it go so much easier so i really encourage that too some people do some people don't uh but uh at least you give them that choice because it will make it, in my opinion, a whole lot easier, less chance of it falling out in the end, 
Because again, the worst thing to happen is you present the, the, a home inspection and a repair addendum to sellers who aren't prepared for it, think everything's fine and the whole deal will fall apart. But you have to remember if that happens, the, the next person is gonna see the same thing and you're gonna go through the same thing again. So stop that, take care of it before you even get to that point. <laughs> That's right, darn it. <laughs> so, uh, so Travis, in addition to um, commonly seeing rodents, um, this time of year, what what other problems should people be uh, thinking about if they're buying or selling right now? Um, so, some other common things is just overall crawl space maintenance. Um, we tend to see a lot more water this time of year. Um, so if you're in an area with a high water table, poor drainage, um, we tend to find a lot more water in crawl spaces this time of year. So that's something that we've always got to have dealt with as well. Um, I would say 80% of the houses we go into and into the crawl space, there is at least one plumbing fixture leaking. Um, so that's just kind of a good habit to get into checking that. Um, the plumbing fixtures, the glue, um, they could have just been installed improperly in the beginning, uh, but those can fail over time. So they're not always guaranteed to just keep functioning 100%. Uh, toilets can come loose and start leaking around the base. So there's always stuff like that that should be looked at. Um, and going back to where you were talking about just having your house inspected, even if you're not selling or buying, um, we do have a, a maintenance program that we do uh, where we'll check your crawl space in your roof once a year. Um, it's $200 a year. And so with that, you get the crawl space inspection, the roof inspection, which are going to be your two major sources of water intrusion or um, like rodent damage. So we're checking that. Um, you also get uh, free tech support from us and um, a recommendations and all that type of stuff. So that's awesome. That's Yay. I did not know you had that. That's fantastic. I'm going to put that on all my rentals. That's wonderful. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, so we, just, we just try to help out the general community at a little bit lower cost because obviously it's not most people are inside their homes they know what's going on inside their homes they don't need us to come in and tell them the range is working um, so we kind of excluded <laughs> that part of it out of there um, and just kind of check major places that people don't want to go so attic roof crawl space nobody wants to do that unless they have their christmas stuff sort of in their attic um, but we'll help out with that and then give you those uh, pictures of your house once a year to make sure there's no big issues coming up. So I uh, definitely encourage people to kind of look into that. So one of my favorite um, inspections is the sewer scope. And that is, again, not super common in Southern Oregon. Uh, I'm curious, Travis, how often do you guys get called to do that? Because I think you have your own equipment now, don't you? Yep. Yep. We got uh, six rigs running. Um, so we're kind of doing those constantly. I would say 60% of our inspections are upgraded to include that sewer scope. Um, so that's, that's beneficial and we highly recommend it. Um, it's just, that's such an expensive repair if it has to happen. Um, and it's good to know that beforehand for uh, $225 extra on your inspection, you're gonna know that you're not gonna have a backup week one or something to deal with down the road. So um, sewer line repairs, depending on how much needs to be repaired can range from like $2,000 to $15,000 uh, just on what has to be done. Um, so it's, it's an expensive fix. And you know, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the age of the house. I remember a few years ago, uh, there was a house that was only four years old and it had the sewer pipe completely severed at the driveway where it met the street in a brand new subdivision. And our thought later was when they were backfilling with that big yellow equipment, backhoe, mm -hmm. is that what it's called? Yep. Okay, yep. backfilling backhoe. They might've accidentally tapped it and broke it. And it was just those years, it was just running right into the earth. So it really doesn't mean it's just for older houses, even new houses can have a problem. Right. And even two, two of the last three new house inspections we've done that have done a sewer scope, two of those have actually needed to be redone really? um, because the joints, obviously, when they put the put that in, compacted it and everything, um, they didn't compact it well enough to where the joints offset and broke that pipe apart. So and that's not that's not that percentage on all new homes, but just the last couple we've done um, have actually had an issue. 
Um, overall, I would say maybe 10, 15% of the new homes we do a sewer line inspection on, we do find some small issue, uh, but that's a great time to do it because the builder's gonna come back, they're gonna repair it, they're gonna make sure everything's good and they've all been wonderful about it. Nobody throws a fit, um, it just happens by accident. No one knows about it until you do a sewer line inspection. Um, so I definitely encourage it. Uh, it's, it's well worth your investment and it's just good information to have. Yeah. And if you're on the buyer side, you do not want to sign up for that repair because if it's in the street, we've had some be as much as $17,000. And if it's in your yard, we've had some be as little as 800. But the point is, you know, you just have all this other stuff to deal with. Um, and if you're on the seller side, boy, I, I just think you want to know ahead of time so you can be prepared for that expense. Mm -hmm. I think you were the first one, to my knowledge, Alice, who ever started talking about sewer scopes. And now look at look how more common they are and, and look what's going on. So again, you started that kind of thing, like bring home inspections. You're going to be famous for that because uh, <laughs> if you're a smart seller, your buyer, you'll take your advice. <laughs> well, and we have a break coming up. So uh, please come back. We're talking to Travis Hand from Rogue Inspections. And uh, we are sponsored by the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors today. We thank them very much. So do not touch that dial. Alice and Pete will be right back. Well, welcome back to The Real Estate Show. Folks, I'm Alice Lima with Pete Bell Castro. We're both real estate brokers here at John L. Scott, Southern Oregon. And we're talking to Travis Hand of Rogue Inspection Services. Uh, just a reminder, you can uh, catch this broadcast again tomorrow at 6 p.m. And you can also find 11 years worth of radio shows on the radio show Oregon dot com so make sure to check us out on the website uh travis we wanted to just touch a little bit uh we know we were talking about sewer scope but um what are some of the other inspections that you can have that people may not know about so we we kind of try to incorporate as many services as we can um into our inspection process. Uh, number one, it speeds up the process for the buyers and the real estate agent keeps the transaction moving. You don't have 45 different people coming to look at stuff people are interested in. Um, so that's been pretty popular. Uh, but the uh, most of the things we do, uh, we've got your standard inspection and your sewer line inspection. Um, we do sprinkler system inspection. So we'll run through that for people, uh, make sure that's operating. Um, we do foundation elevation surveys, um, where it just kind of gives you measurements of the foundation to make sure there's no variation, indications of settlement, heaving, anything like that. Um, we do mold testing, which is becoming pretty popular. Um, we're starting to do quite a few of those. Um, the, what else do we do? HVAC, scopes. Um, hey, hey, are you seeing more mold issues out there uh, lately or something? Because we really don't have, it doesn't seem we have a lot so when you say that, how, this, what kind of a, is that a big problem anymore or what? Uh, really not a big problem. As long as people are taking care of their houses and uh, making sure there's no um, leaks going on, then, then things tend to be okay. And most of them come back clean um, with normal yeah. results and stuff. Um, and then if they do come back bad, we can typically pinpoint something is going wrong and then have that further evaluated. So. Um, I think with kind of the um, everybody being at home more, um, you may start to have people picking up on some other allergens and, and want to eliminate the possibility of that being mold or something going on inside of their home. So it's, it's become pretty popular here this year, but as far as the results, everything's staying pretty normal. Um, yeah, I really like the, um, the duct work scope. Um, and, you know, to circle back what we were talking about in the beginning about rodents and um, damage to your duct system, whether it's in the crawl space or in the attic, uh, over time, there's lint and dust and stuff that collects in those. And, um, and then this time of year, you're breathing that because your furnace is going. You're right. Um, so just as a general maintenance thing, it is good to have your ducts cleaned. Um, at least maybe every three to five years. If you can do it more than that, that's great because that is air just circulating through your house and the cleaner you can keep that duct work, the less allergens, pet dander, uh, people dander, anything like that you're gonna have running through your house. So I uh, definitely encourage that if you can do that, uh, just makes your whole living environment that much more fresh and, and cleaner. 
Um, but we do do that. We look for um, rodent penetrations in the in the uh, duct work and mold buildup because mold can grow on uh, dirty surfaces. But typically, we haven't found that. Um, and just overall condition of the duct work, and, and that's beneficial. It is a bit tricky sometimes, depending on the layouts. Um, a lot of the ceiling vents and stuff are, are hard for us to do. So we've kind of phased away from it a little bit unless it's specifically requested, um, but it is still an optional service. Um, we do do radon testing now, um, mold, water sampling, um, asbestos testing, and we haven't got into lead testing. We do need to get somebody licensed for that, but uh, that will come down the road. Um, we're starting to look into energy scores and energy assessments that will be coming very soon. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for now. Well, that's a lot. And, you know, uh, going back to the ductwork uh, scope, what's really interesting is sometimes the uh, connections are not what you think they are. And you've got hot and cold air going into your attic or your your crawl space and you don't even know it unless you mm -hmm. get that video and when you get these scopes uh the the person paying for the inspection gets the full color video right yep yep so that's included uh with every inspection we've got the section in there we'll we'll include that link so they can see the whole video um, you can use that video if you need to to get estimates or send it to a plumber and be like hey what do you think of this like we try to speed up that process um, uh, even though they do require sometimes to come out and redo that to make sure that they can mark it and get all their measurements, um, which I know is a bit of an inconvenience, but um, at least you know about it beforehand um, when you probably wouldn't have known about it at all if you didn't do the scope. So um, we do have a locator. We can do that locating service as well. Um, we don't do it with every inspection, um, but if you need that, just let us know. We'll come back, locate it, make sure we can be as much assistance as we can. Um, to get those estimates. I want my people to hear that, you know, when you get at the end of the day, Travis is going to give you a report back on it, whether you get it as the buyer or the seller, you're going to get that report. And in Oregon, when you get that repair addendum that in our state, the seller can do the repairs on their home in, in this in this repair addendum, as long as you get permission from the seller or from the buyer. So you don't have to go out and hire contractors if you both agree that you can do the work. So just keep that in mind, but that gives you such a head start if you have the inspection ahead of time. So anyway, that's one of the things Oregon's unique about that. You don't have to have a home inspection, but if you're getting a loan, you're probably going to need one. So anyway, that's why we need Travis out there to do this kind of work and, and people like you. And I really do appreciate that because you kind of keep the whole thing going. And I think it's really important that the buyer and the seller know what, know what the house is all about. And, uh, and, and thank goodness you do that because uh, it really makes, it makes everything a lot smoother. I wanna know what the house, what's wrong with it, if there's something that needs to be fixed. And that's why we have you hire you to do that. So thank you for that, Travis. And you know, look how far your business has come since you first, when we first met you a number of years ago, uh, Joe was still here and Rogue Inspections, you're doing quite well. You're over the Klamath Basin. I know we see you here as well. So uh, we appreciate all that you're doing and, and good luck with your business. Yeah, thank you, Pete. I appreciate that. And it's been uh, a fun journey. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to go through it with you guys. Well, and it's so fun to have all these extra inspections. You know, um, I remember getting some of the older cottages that I had clients buying, uh, getting the lead test from the kitchen sink. And it was uh, very comforting for them to know because they were going to use them as rentals. And then as a landlord, uh, you do want to make sure that you're providing a safe environment for your tenants um, for a lot of reasons. Um, and so that just really was good peace of mind. And people are getting to the point where knowledge is, uh, is critical for them. Um, having knowledge about their home, what they're purchasing, what they're putting their money toward, um, how that money's going to do, what repairs they're going to need to make. So adding additional services has just been um uh, great because people just love it they want to know more about the house and as much as they can know they want to know so yeah and the sprinklers uh the sprinkler test is nice too yeah yeah popular. so good job picking all the right uh inspections to add on to your list <laughs> trial and error
<laughs> well, thank you, Travis. We appreciate you joining us today. Lots of good information. Uh, Travis Hand, Rogue Inspections. Uh, this is Alice Lima and Pete Bell Castro saying thank you for joining us on the Real Estate Show. Again, you can catch us with a repeat broadcast tomorrow on the same station, KCMX Radio 880, and that'll be at 6 p.m. And uh, Please go out, have a safe and uh, enjoyable Southern Oregon weekend, and we will see you back here again next week. Have a great day.